How can you import Excel data straight into SQL Server? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So here you can see some data. In Excel, we've got employee number, which is an integer, employee first name, employee middle name. Notice some of the values are blank or null, last name, government ID, date of birth, which is a date, and department. So in this video, we're going to have a look at two separate ways. The first requires us not to have an Excel spreadsheet, but a comma separated value file or CSV. So I can create one very easily in Excel by going to File, Save As, and then change the file type from Excel Workbook to CSV. There are several different types of CSV. I will just pick the first one unless you've got any particular needs for any of the others. So I'll click Save. Notice a dialog box then comes up saying, the selected file type does not support workbooks that contain multiple sheets. So what it means is it will only save the current active sheet and that's fine. So I'm going to click OK. So now I've saved this, I'm going to close this spreadsheet down and move into SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS. I'm going to go to the database I want to import it into and right and click on the database. Notice I shouldn't be right and clicking on anything else such as tables because this will give me a different set of items in the context menu. And I'm going to go to tasks and import flat file. So a CSV is a flat file. I'll click on this and this gives me this dialog box. So let's click next and specify where the file is. So I'll click browse I will navigate to my folder and click on my data to import CSV and text. So notice these are the only files that you can import. Comma separated values or standard text files where the computer can determine where the start of one field or column is. So I'll click on data to import and click open. So there is my new table name and my schema name and you can change it if you wish. Click next. It then previews the first 50 rows, so you can see everything is going to be imported correctly. Let's click next. I can modify the columns. So employee number is a small int, and that's probably quite a good data type. Employee first name, nvar char brackets 50, so a string which can use Unicode characters. So we're talking characters outside of Western Europe characters. Now I can change this if I want. I can just click on the data type and say, no, I want something else. Is there a primary key? Well, I could say the employee number is a primary key and do I want to allow nulls? And you can see it has already checked the employee middle name to allow nulls. What I generally do is just leave these as is unless I've got a particular reason to change them. Next, I'll click on next. There's my summary, click finish and you can see that is how quick it can import around a thousand rows. So let's click close. I will go to a new query, make sure I'm in the right database, AdventureWorks 2014 in my case, go to tables and I cannot see the new table. That's okay, I'll just click on tables and then click refresh. And now you can see my data to import. So I'll enter select star from and drag in my data to import, and there we can see 1,003 rows, all imported fine. So I'm going to delete this table now just by right and clicking on it and going to delete, click OK, and the table is now deleted. I'm now going to import it in a second way. Again, I will right and click on AdventureWorks 2014, my database, and go to Tasks. But instead of having a flat file, a CSV or text, which you might not have, I'm going to import data. And this will allow me to import the spreadsheet in its native form. So I'll click on import data and we get a more complicated dialog box. This is based on SSIS, SQL Server Integration Services. And I'll click next. It asks me for a data source. So I'm going to say my data source is and I could use a flat file source, but I'm going to use Microsoft Excel. Then it asks me, what is the version? 
Well, notice that the latest version it's got is Microsoft Excel 2016, even though while recording this, the latest version is Microsoft Excel 2022. In reality, if you're using a modern version of Excel, it doesn't matter which version you click as long as it's from 2007 onwards. So I'm going to select the latest version, Microsoft Excel 2016. So I'll click browse to get to my folder and I'm going to click on my file and click OK. And notice I have checked first row has column names. So it won't read the first row as data, it will read it as the names of the fields or columns. So let's click next. And you can see that I've got a problem. The Microsoft ACE OLEDB 16.0 provider is not registered on this local machine. If you have this problem, what you need to do is download the Microsoft Accessible Database Engine, in this case, the 2016 redistributable. So it is a free file that you can just click on download, select the version. I have a 64-bit machine, so I will be using the 64-bit version. If not, you can use the 32-bit version. If you're not sure which version you have, then open up Windows Explorer, right and click on computer or my computer or this PC, go to properties, and it should tell you somewhere whether you've got a 64-bit operating system or not. So I'm going to check Access Database Engine x64.exe. You can see it's a very small file, 79 and a half megabytes, and it will just take a few seconds to download. Once it's downloaded, I just click on it. I then get a dialog box asking if I'll allow the app to make changes. Yes, I will. I then have the Microsoft Access Database Engine 2016 English setup. Click next, next, next. And you can see it installs fairly swiftly. So now that it is installed, if you're still having problems, you may find the easiest way is to go back to your spreadsheet and save it as a CSV or save it as an Excel 97 to 2003 workbook if it's under around 65,000 rows. So I'll save that, go back to my SQL Server import and export wizard, click browse, and I'm going to import the 97 to 2003 workbook, and I'm going to call the Excel version Microsoft Excel 97 to 2003, and click next. Next is the destination. Now it used to be that the destination was the SQL Server native client. However, you can see that it is no longer an option for SQL Server 2022, unless you've already got it previously installed. If you are able to use the SQL Server native client, then you can click on it and then select your credentials. If not, then you should use the Microsoft OLEDB driver for SQL Server. Now, if you've got this version, then you would click on properties and then enter your server name and the information, SQL Server authentication or Windows authentication. I'm using Windows authentication. It's basically what you use when you connect to a database at the very beginning. Then I'm going to select the database AdventureWorks 2014 and I'll test the connection and click OK. So whichever destination you choose to use, let's click next. We can then write an SQL query or just copy data from one or more tables or views. So I'm going to use this first option and click next. So it says, where is your data? Is it in sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, or is it in a view? Well, I'm going to click sheet one and you can see the destination is going to be DBO sheet one. Now I can change this. I can also edit mappings. So if I click on this, you can see the column types that it proposes to use. And this is even wider than when we were using our CSV file. So employee number, it was a small int, it's now float. And the employee first name, it was an nvarchar 50, it's now 255. However, I think the important thing to do is to get data into your system and then you can manipulate the column size. So I'm going to click OK on this, leave everything as is, click next. And you have the choice to save this as an SSIS package because this is a cut down version of SSIS or run immediately. I'm going to click run immediately and finish. And here you can see how quickly it can be. Now, if you have any problems, any red X's, this is when you need to click on your hyperlinks that you see here and have a look at the various messages. So I'm going to click close. 
I'm going to open up my database and there is my new table. If you can't see it, then go to tables and click the refresh. And I can now go to a new query and say, select star from and dragging my table name and I've got my data. This is when I can also do other things such as change my column types. So I'll go into sheet one. So you can see employee number is a float. So I'm going to say alter table dbo dot sheet one, alter column employee number and make this a small int for example. And you'll be told if you can't do something. So if I tried making this a tiny int, for example, which only goes up to 255, it says, I can't do this and it doesn't try and do this. So it's good at this stage to change the column types as opposed to doing it earlier when it might have jeopardized the importing of your data. Now I've got a few questions submitted to me about this process. First one, I would like to import about 8 million rows through 8 different Excel and CSV files. Will this method work? Well, as long as the table is set up correctly, yes, this will work. You are not limited to just a million rows in Excel. If you save your files as a CSV, you can have as many rows as you want. Next question, what if there are some wrapped text columns in Excel? Well, that's no problem. Excel is intelligent enough to say, okay, this is the content of one cell. It doesn't matter whether it is wrapped and I will import it in an individual cell. Is there a way to link Excel tables like you can do in Microsoft Access? No, I'm afraid that there isn't. However, you could save this as an SSIS package and get it to run, say, overnight, once a day, twice a day, or however often you need. And there's another question, why do I import it into a separate table? I find that this has the fewest problems. If I try to import it into an existing table, I often find that the process doesn't work. So I have a staging table, and then what I can do is insert the contents into another table and then delete my staging table. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did and you'd like to see more and you'd like to expand your knowledge of SQL, then please go to my website, idodata.com, where we've got lots of video courses to expand your knowledge of TSQL, database administration, and SSIS, SSAS, and SSRS. And if you're wondering what all of these various components are, then have a look at the next video, which you should be able to click on on the end screen, where I'll go through the various components of SQL Server. It's not just about creating select queries. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click the like. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thank you very much for joining me and keep learning.